So I was, <laughs> I was like, so then I had to like research like crazy. And uh, it actually, I've, I don't know, I, I really have, have enjoyed uh, going through this. And I mean, I've learned a lot, even if you guys are like, I already knew all this, I didn't. So I'm like, this is cool. So but let's just pray real quick. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the chance to dive into your word. And Father, we just pray that you would speak to us today through your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, so I'm going to move really fast today. And uh, um, it might be a l- like slightly longer than normal. That's why I'm going to, s- you're, you're going to be like, why is he going so fast? That's a lot of information. But then instead of small groups tonight, we're just going to go outside and play some nine square and, and hang out yeah, while it's still light. So let's get going. So it's still light out. All right. Um, but I, what I'm going to do is these next two chapters, uh, over the next this week and next week, it's gonna seem like I'm all over the place. But what I've done is after looking through uh, uh, historic, like historic, I want I don't want to say historic, ancient text and like uh, scholars like uh, jo- Josephus and stuff like that, I've done my best to place the verses in chronological order. Okay. So the way that I'm going to lay this out will make more sense because I'm going to lay it out kind of in chronological order. So don't worry. Between this week and next week, I will cover every verse in chapters 10 and 11. But you're going to be like, holy cow, he's all over the place. And it's because I'm, I was piecing it together so that it made sense, uh, at least to me. All right. So we're going to start in actually Genesis 11. And we're going to look real quick at some genealogy before we get into like a timeline. And I'm not going to read this whole thing because we're going to actually cover this next week. And it's really good. And I challenge you to be here or at least watch it. But I want to look at just the first three names here. And it says in verse 10, Genesis 11, verse 10, it says, This is the account of Shem's family. Two years after the great flood, when Shem was 100 years old, he became the father of Arpachshad. After the birth of Arpachshad, Shem lived another 500 years and had... a other sons and daughters. When Arpachshad was 35 years old, he became the father of Shelah. Right. Now hold up. Right there. That's as far as we're going to go. So I'm going to do my best to explain this because I'm still not fully sure I understand. But somewhere in the 1200 years, uh, there's a name missing right here. And so when they when they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, which out predated a lot of the text that in our modern day bibles they found that that name is actually there it's actually in other ancient texts that didn't make it into the bible that name's also there but also luke you uh says the name that's also missing so let's real quick go to luke 3 34 this is the same genealogy that we're looking at in genesis but we're going to see that there's an extra name here and so uh, Judah was the son of Jacob. Jacob was the son of Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham. Abraham was the son of Terah. Terah was the son of Nahor. Nahor was the son of Sarug. Sarug was the son of Ru. Ru was the son of Peleg. Peleg was the son of Eber. Eber was the son of Shelah. Shelah was the son of, oh, a name that wasn't in the Genesis one, okay? And so it is, this is not, um, your Bible might, it might be spelled with a K. Um, this is not Canaan that, that, we're, that we looked at last week, okay? This is a different, this is way further down in the line, of, uh, or earlier in the line. So this is a, and a different spelling, this is a different person, okay? So this person right here slips in between our pack shad and uh, Shayla, okay? So now let's go back to Genesis. Um, so Shem at 100 uh, had our pack shad two years after the flood and lived 600 years. Our pack shad was 35 and he had Shela. Okay, so this is where that name is missing. He had Canaan, and Canaan had Shela. So there's, uh, I did a bunch of research on this of why this would be missing, okay? And so there's two um, thought processes behind. The first was that it was a transcript error, which I, okay, I went to a, um, a Jewish high school when I was in England, and I'm going to tell you right now, I highly doubt it, <laughs> okay? So the, the way that they would... Uh, transcribe all of the stuff they would copy it if there was even like a slip of the pen a smudge anything they throw the whole thing out and start over it had to be precise so if there was something that was off it might be the word the but it wouldn't be a name in genealogy so 
I, I, per, I mean, I'm not a scholar, so whatever. I don't agree that that's what it is. The other one is that it's believed that he was intentionally left out. So I was like, okay, well, why would he be intentionally left out? So we're going to look at some stuff today, which is uh, ancient text that um, was not put in the Bible. So we're not preaching from it. Understand that. I'm not saying that this is fact. I'm going to use a lot of this other text to kind of paint a picture for us tonight so that maybe we can piece together what's going on, okay? And so we're actually going to look at the book of Jubilee, which... Um, I forgot to look at how old this text is, but it's really old. And so uh, it says, In a 29th jubilee, in the first week, in the beginning thereof, our Pakshad took a, to himself a wife. And then it goes on and says, And she bore him a son. In the third year, in this week, he called his name Canaan. So that might be the spelling you have in your Bible in Luke, uh, other than the one I have. And the son grew, and his father taught him writing, and he went back to seek for himself a place where he may seize for himself a city. And he found a writing which a former generation had carved on a rock, and he read what was thereon, and he transcribed it and sinned owing to it. For it contained the teaching of the watchers, in accordance with what they used to observe, the omens of the sun, moon, and stars, the signs of heaven. And he wrote down and said nothing regarding it, for he was afraid to speak to Noah about at least he should be angry with him on account of it. Okay, so pause here. So we did talk about this a little bit in uh, chapter 5. So if you guys remember, again, this isn't the Bible, so it's just painting a picture of maybe, okay, I'm not saying this is what it is, but in chapter 5 we talked about how the fallen angels taught man witchcraft. They taught him all of these different things in um and that and they taught him how to make weapons and everything else. And we saw that in the book of Enoch, um, witchcraft, how to uh, weapons, astrology, all of this stuff. So Canaan, he found this cave of carvings that was from people before the flood. And he writes it down, and he's afraid to tell Noah, and he takes it with him, introducing back into the world everything that caused the flood in the first place. And so, uh, it uses the word watchers. Well, let's look in the Bible real quick, because the Bible actually uses the wa word watchers too. So in, the, in Daniel 4, 13, 17, and 23, it says this. I saw in a vision in my head while on my bed, there was a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven. 17. Um, <clears throat> this decision is my, by my decree of the watchers. 23. And... Inasmuch as the king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven. So the word watcher here in the Hebrew means angel. So if you look at it, it, it uh, if you go back to the Hebrew, it means angel or a guard or a watcher to guard or watch over the souls of men. So the word watcher is there. You know, it's not like this weird word that's not in the Bible. We just fly by it. And so maybe. Okay, so... Um, do what you want with that. It's not a necessarily fact because it's not in the Bible. So we get through this genealogy, and it stops at uh, Abram, and we're going to look at that in a few weeks. But uh, Genesis 5, 23 says, And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. 929. So all the days of Noah were 950 years, and then he died. So I did this with the genealogy last time, so let's look at it really quick, because I was actually surprised to know that Noah was alive when Abraham was born. Anybody else know that? Yeah, I know, because you, you read the stories, and you think like thousands of years have gone by, and you're like, oh, it's totally different. It's the exact same time period Abram comes onto the scene. And so... Um, actually, Noah outlives Peleg and somebody else on that list, Nahor. He outlives them. And so, actually, next week, um, not using the Bible, but using other texts, it's, you know, do what you want. Earth. So they wanted to make a name for themselves. They wanted, to, uh, they wanted to exalt themselves and be famous. But most of all, they wanted to defy God. If God said, hey, 
Genesis 9, 1, then God blessed Noah and his sons and told them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. I believe that part of this was to defy God. Oh, you want us to spread out? We're, we're going to stay here and build a tower. It's part of defying God. And so, the, the, the purpose of them staying there was, one, to elevate themselves. Nimrod set himself as, as king, became famous among the earth as a hunter of men, and they defied God. We will not scatter. All right, verse 5. But the Lord came down, looked at the city of the tower, and the people were, uh, were building. Look, he said, the people are united, and they speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down, confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. In that way, the Lord, in that way, the Lord scattered them all over the earth. I want to make sure you guys are understanding. He didn't teleport people all over the earth. He scattered them by the fact that they couldn't understand each other, so they just left. And it says, that's why the city was called Babel, because it was where the Lord confused the people with different languages. In this way, he scattered them all over the earth. All right. So now they split up. So I, I would say that more than likely, I want to say there was a verse, and I couldn't find it. Um, I, I read it, and then I was like, where did I see that at? But that um, they kind of, um, he gave them different languages per clan. So your family would still, you would go home and you'd all understand each other. And we're going to look at this um, here in a few weeks when um, Abram's dad, dad says, hey, it's time for us to go. I believe that the ones he took all spoke the same language as him and everybody else in the group didn't. And so it was time, it's time to go. We all can't understand each other. It's time to go. And so, um, but here we see they were unified in the wrong things. They were unified, but it was the wrong things. As a nation today, the question is, are we unified but in the wrong things? At what point does God disperse us? At what point do we say we defy God? Look how great we are. It's all about us. It's all about our fame. It's all about our name as a nation. America, the greatest country in the world. Yeah, for everybody else. We give away money, but we borrow money from China. Nobody borrows it from us. We just give it away. And so, look how great we are. America. America. Don't get me wrong. I'm super patriotic. I am. But at what point does God say, I'm done. <laughs> you guys are splitting up. And so, Genesis 10, 13, uh, Mizoram was the ancestor. All these guys couldn't find anything on them except for the fact that it says from whom the Philistines came. And we know uh, the Philistines is who Goliath fought for. Okay. All right. And the Philistines, just so you know, settled on the south coast of Israel. All right. So, Genesis 10, 15 says, And Canaan, the oldest son was Sidon, and then I want, I'm not going to read them all, but I want you to look real quick, pick out a few names in here, look at them, okay? And because they're going to come up, I, I'm going to later on be like, hey, remember those names? Look, really quick. And so these are the descendants of Ham, identified by clan, language, territory, and national identity. Okay, so these clans right here, uh, they settled in... Uh, modern day uh, Lebanon, uh, South uh, Asia Minor, which is where, again where Paul went, Israel, Hill Country, and Jerusalem, Mesopotamia, Syria, Israel, Israel again, Syria. Basically, they went to whose land? To Shem's land. But who is this? This is Canaan from the line of Ham. And all his descendants now have dispersed all over Shem's land. The uh, Sinanites, I don't know if I said that right, is Syria. But it's actually believed that they got the heck out of there and went to China. Ended up in China. And in fact, the Chinese um, still claim that uh, they are the descendants of the Sinanites. And most of them call themselves 
Han, meaning we are the people of Ham. Isn't that interesting? I didn't know that. So they still use that word today. And um, China in ancient times was called the land of the Sinanites. So maybe. Um, and then uh, down here, more of those names, Syria, Syria, and Lebanon again. So we see here the land of Canaan was basically Israel, Lebanon, Syria, and Mesopotamia. But what's interesting about it is that's not his land. So now you have an overlap. Instead of spreading out, everyone's happy. You have a group of people that came back and took over somebody else's land. And so according to historical books, again, it's not in the Bible, but according to historical books, Noah divided the earths up into three sections. So again, let's look at this real quick because it's going to paint a really good picture for us. And I promise you I'm going to bring it around and you're going to be like, ah, that makes sense. Jubilee 914. And thus the sons of Noah divided unto their sons, in the presence of Noah, their father, and he bound them all by an oath. Oh, I don't even know what that word is. Imprecating. A, a curse on everyone that sought to seize the portion which had not fallen to him or by his lot. Okay? So a curse would fall on you if you took the land that wasn't yours. And they all said, so be it, so be it for themselves and their sons forever. Throughout the generations till time of judgment on which the Lord God shall judge with the sword and fire. So basically from now until the end of time, this is going to be it. And so, remember, Lebanon, Syria, Mesopotamia, Israel, that's where they all went. Jubilee 1030. And Ham and his father and Cush and Mizraim, his brother, said unto him, Thou have settled, uh, no, back up. Go to Jubilee 10, 28. And Ham and his sons went into the land which he occupied, which he was to occupy, which he had acquired by his portion of land to the south. And Canaan saw the land of Lebanon to the river of Egypt, that it was very good. And he went not into the land of his inheritance to the west, uh, to, the we uh, to the west, that is, to the sea. He dwelt in the land of Lebanon east and westward from the border of Jordan to the border of the sea. Okay, real quick, go back to that one, that one map. Yeah, okay, so if he went west, west of the sea, I would put, uh, west of the sea, I would put him, that's where he should have went. And he didn't go. Because that would make sense. Ham went all, literally took this, went this way. And he didn't go. And so, uh, Jubilee 10, 30 says, and Ham, his father, and Cush, his brothers said unto him, Thou have settled in land which is not thine, and that has not fallen to us by a lot. Do not do so, for it thou dost do so, thou thy sons will fall in the land and be accursed through sedition. <laughs> sedition is like today would be like a felony um, because you're trying to overthrow the authority and government in place. For, uh, for by sedition they have settled, and by sedition they thy children fall and I'm so glad that we don't have, <laughs> okay. and thou, what, this, man, all right, <laughs> thou shalt be rooted out forever, dwell not in the dwelling of Shem, for to Shem and his sons did it come by their lot, cursed art thou, and cursed shalt thou be beyond all sons of Noah, by the curse by which we bound ourselves, and by oath of the presence of the holy judge, in which the presence of Noah our father, okay, obviously this isn't the Bible, okay, but what it's saying is Canaan wasn't supposed to be there. Which gives us, actually makes more sense when we look at Deuteronomy 20. God gives the Israelites this command. But of the cities of these people which the Lord God has gives you as an inheritance, you shall let nothing that breathes remain alive. But you shall utterly destroy them. Look at the list of cities. Does those, any of those names look familiar? I just told you, look at the list. It's the same names. So it makes Deuteronomy kind of make sense. Like, why would God tell them to go in and kill all these people? Just so you guys know, God gave Canaan and his family 400 years to get out. And they didn't go. Isn't that interesting? Okay, now that makes sense. God is not this mean person. He's like, hey, get the people out that, were, that broke the oath and aren't supposed to be in your land. Get them out. So, 
uh, Judges uh, 1.8, and it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites under tribute and did not completely drive them out. So when it came time, Israel does not do what the Lord says. And in Judges 2, 2 through 3, it says, But you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Therefore, I, sh- I sh- also say, I will not drive them out before you, but they shall be thorns in your side, and their gods shall be a snare to you. So they didn't completely destroy the Canaanites. Let's go back to that, that last map again. And so, conflict to this day over that piece of land. Now, this is not um, Islam and Judaism. There's another place in the Bible that will show where there's a disagreement and where they there's a conflict there. But outside of Islam and Judaism, there's still conflict over land. And it stems right there. So, be careful. Remember a couple weeks ago we said, be careful what you endorse. Right now, Black Lives Matter is anti-Israel. Be careful. Because we want to be on the right side of what God has said should be. So, God is patient. You know, we, we looked at it. He, it was, what, 1,600 years from Adam all the way to the flood. Gave him 1,600 years to get it right. He didn't. And then Babel, it's somewhere like 900 years. He gives him 900 years. They still don't get it right. And he doesn't kill them. He just spreads them out. Question is, how long will we be disobedient and expect there to be no consequence? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today, God. Super weird chapter. But God, we made it through it. Thank the Lord. Father, we just say... God, your word's amazing. And next week, as we dive into your word, God, we, we're excited to see what your response to this is, what your heart for this is. And so, Father, pray, Lord God, that as, our, as, a, as, a, as an American people, we would not endorse or follow disobedience, but instead we would do what honors you. We'd be a people that serve and love you. And so, Father, we thank you, God, that your word is just so amazing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So-